What's up everybody? Today we're talking Illustrator. Shapes, Pathfinder, Shape Builder tool, and much more. So look up into the trees and let's get into it. Okay, so our lesson today, we're going to use shapes in Illustrator to create a simple animal. And our animal today is this cute little owl. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this example I have. So you're on our homepage when you first open up Illustrator. And we're all gonna to start together. We're gonna to create new and we're going to use a letter size um, template. So if you go over to the print tab on this dialog box that pops up and choose letter. When you click on letter, it has all of these presets already filled in. You don't need to change anything. We're gonna leave all the default settings and go ahead and click create. All right, so our letter size canvas, our letter size artboard actually is what it's called, um, has popped up on our page in Illustrator. And we're going to do a few things real quick just to make sure that all of our workspaces look the same so everyone can find the correct panels. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to go to Window and Workspace. And by default, yours is probably on Essentials, but I want to go ahead and flip it over to Essentials Classic for this project. All right, so Window, Workspace, Essentials Classic. And then go ahead, after that's checked, you want to go ahead and reset Essentials Classic as well to make sure that all of our settings are reset and we are all back on the same page, starting in the same spot. Okay, so now that we have our workspace set up and we are all reset with our settings, we're going to go ahead and place in our OWL template sketch. So this is just a JPEG file, so we're going to go to File, Place, and we're going to find the OWL template sketch JPEG. Press Place and click anywhere inside of your uh, artboard. Now, this file should fit pretty closely to where our page is if it goes off the bottom a little bit that that's fine um, it doesn't really matter as long as it's inside of our artboard area which is that black line once you get it close to where you want it we're going to go over to our layers panel and we're going to actually make this layer that the owl sketch is on a template layer so first I'm gonna label it just so that I know what this is. I double clicked on layer one in our layers panel and I typed in template. Press enter to confirm that's the name that you want to name that layer. Now, if I went too fast there, this is the layers panel on our right hand side over here. Um, if you have your mouse over, it's two diamond shapes like layered on top of each other. Um, that's our layers panel. And then this one that we have selected, that's our template layer that has our owl. So we just clicked on that to rename it. Now we actually want to make this a template layer. So in Illustrator, a template layer is a layer that is not printed, but helps you create whatever you're trying to create. So um, while that is selected, while it's blue, highlight blue, you're going to click on this little hamburger menu at the top right hand corner of the layers panel. And then all these options come up for you. You're going to go to template and we're going to ch check that so that it is confirmed that this is a template layer. A few things happened. First, you'll notice that the owl sketch kind of dimmed down. It's not as bright as it was before. It has a lower opacity. This icon changed, the visibility icon for the layer changed a little bit, and it automatically locked our template layer so that it is not gonna be edited. And that's what we want. So it's not gonna be printed, it's not gonna be edited, it's just kind of there in the background, something to help us get an idea of how to draw our owl. Um, before we start drawing our owl with the shapes in Illustrator, we need to create a layer for it. So we're going to do this little square with a plus sign in it. It says create new layer. And that layer 2 pops up in, on top of the temple layer. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And this is going to be our owl layer. So this is where we create our owl. Typed in the word owl and pressed enter. And now we are on that layer to start creating our owl. The first tool that we're going to use to create the owl, we're going to start with this body shape. So all the way around the head, down through the torso and the tail, that all that is going to be one shape. Um, but we're not going to make it with one shape. We're going to actually start with several different shapes and kind of combine them together. So the first shape that we're going to use is the ellipse tool. And that is 
If you have your toolbar over here on the left hand side, it is the fifth tool down on the left hand side. It looks like the rectangle tool, but if you click and hold on it, you have more options. And the ellipse tool is the one that we want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. To use the ellipse tool, you're simply going to click and drag and it makes an ellipse. Whenever you let go is when it confirms like the, shape, the size and the, the shape of the shape. So I'm going to get it close to the size of that head. It may not be exactly and that's okay. Now, whenever I draw a shape in Illustrator, I without fail every time forget to change my fill and stroke until after I've already drawn it. And that's okay. You can do it before you use the ellipse tool or while it's selected, you can change the appearance of that ellipse, which is what I'm going to do right now. So right now my ellipse has a white fill. So that's the color that's filled in. And you can see that over here in the appearance panel. So it says the fill is white and it has a black stroke going around the outside here. And it's a one point stroke. So I have my ellipse selected and I know it's selected because it has this bounding box around it. It has a, like a little line that shows that it's selected around the lips. And if you open up your owl layer, there's this concentric circle on that ellipse layer. So that is the layer that you currently have selected. So with it selected, I can change my fill color and my stroke. Right now, while I'm drawing my owl, I want the fill of everything to be see-through. I want there to be no fill so that I can see through to the bottom where my owl sketch template layer is. Then for the stroke, I'm gonna do something a little bright here, maybe like this bright blue. Um, I just want something that I'll be able to see the difference um, for that background layer and it doesn't get confused with my selection here. So I chose the bright blue color and then I'm gonna turn the stroke up to like maybe four. So you can see it's nice and thick there. We can um, really see a difference between the sketch in the background and our actual stroke of our shape. Okay, so now that I have my fill and my stroke set, I have the size of the stroke. Now I can use this black arrow, which is called the selection tool, to click and drag to move my ellipse wherever I want it. So I'm gonna move it right about here on top of my owl and trying to match up with the sketch back behind. I'm gonna use these little handles at the corners or at the edges, sorry, to um, stretch it out a little bit, try to get it close to where that edge is up there at the top. If yours is not perfect, that's okay. This is art, it's not gonna be perfect, but if you can get close, that's great. All right, so we have our first shape. We're gonna actually use another ellipse to create this kind of rounded area of the torso of this owl. So with the ellipse tool selected, now I don't need to worry about changing my fill or my stroke because it's already selected from my, my last shape. So it's going to continue using the no fill and the blue stroke, which is great. I wanna make this ellipse that kinda of goes down here. So I'm gonna start way up here at the top and kinda of drag down, um, try to get close to where I want it there. Use that black arrow tool to manipulate your ellipse a little bit to get it closer to the shape that you want. Now, it looks like I need to make mine a little bit taller so that it's skinnier through here. So I'm gonna zoom out on my artboard. To do that, you, on your PC, you're gonna use Control minus on a, on a Mac computer, you're gonna use Command minus. So I did Command minus on my computer. And now I zoomed out a little bit and I can take the top part of this and stretch it up a little bit so that now it follows that line a little bit better. Once again, don't worry too much about making this perfect. You just want it to be pretty close. Now, one thing I will say that is important in this process is that you wanna make sure that this ellipse and this ellipse do intersect or they overlap intersect or overlap they have to touch at some some way shape or form now i'm going to zoom in a little bit to show you this so command plus on my computer you might use control plus if you're on a windows computer so i have the outer ellipse selected and i'm just going to kind of move my mouse and you'll see that it, it will snap to the edge of this circle you might have to zoom in a little bit to see it, but it will snap to it. So that's where I want it to be. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side to make sure that it snaps. And see, it actually even says intersect. If you hover your mouse to the right spot, there you go, intersect. So we know that those two circles are intersecting. I wonder if I can get this one to say it too. Yep, 
There you go, it says intersect. That's what I want. Basically what that means is that those two paths are absolutely touching. So later on when we use our shape builder tool, um, we're not gonna have any problems because they're not touching. Okay, so now that I'm zooming out again, it's command minus or control minus. Um, now that we have these two shapes, we're going to combine this part of the shape and this part of the shape to make um, the first part of our owl body here. So the way that you do that, is we want to make sure that the both ellipses are selected. So I already know my, my outer ellipse is selected because that was the one I was working on. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and also click on this inner ellipse. And now both of them are selected. You might be able to see the little lines that show that both are selected in our actual drawing, but you can also look over here in the layers menu and the concentric circle is on both of these ellipses. So I'm going to click off of it real quick so you can see that they are not concentric circles, they're just regular circles. But if I click on the outside path of that one, it's concentric, hold down the shift key and the inside path. Now both of them are selected. With both paths selected, we're going to use the Shape Builder tool, which is a really powerful tool in Illustrator and really helps you create these more complex shapes from very simple shapes. So the Shape Builder tool is over here on the left-hand side of our toolbar, and it's like two circles with a little arrow going through them. So I'm going to click on that. And the way the Shape Builder tool works is that you simply draw a line connecting two or more shapes to create the shape that you want. So I want this shape and this shape to be connected together so it's all one shape together. So what I'm gonna do with my, my mouse is I'm just gonna click and drag. You can kinda see like it's making a line. I'm doing like a little squiggly one just so you guys can see it. You don't have to make it that fancy. You could literally just draw a straight line. But now let go and you can see that it's filled it in. It's all one shape. We still have this leftover shape over here and that's fine. We're actually gonna get rid of that. That's our next step. So with our black arrow tool, I'm gonna select anywhere over here just so that nothing is selected. I'm going to choose the things that I don't want to keep and get rid of them. So this top part, I don't wanna keep that. I'm gonna press delete on my keyboard and get rid of it. Now, I hope you notice that there are some more things going on over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this path that I like, that I want, I'm gonna click and drag and just move it off to the side for a second. That way I can see this and this. Those are some pieces that I don't want. They're not helpful. So I'm just clicking on each one of those and pressing delete on my keyboard. And now I can take my path that I do want, that I like, and move it back onto my owl sketch the way that, or in the location that I want it. All right, so we're getting closer. Now we have to add this tail part. Now this is where we get a little tricky because we're going to use the pen tool. And I know a lot of you have a, a love-hate relationship with the pen tool. You can do some amazing things with the pen tool if you practice with it. And so this is just another practice. So I'm gonna walk you through every step that I make here. So I'm using the pen tool. I'm going to start right here and I'm gonna click once and let go with my mouse. I'm gonna do a straight line across, click once and let go with my mouse. Then I'm gonna go do another straight line to right about here. So where this curve kind of starts down here, I'm gonna click once and let go. And then now I'm gonna go all the way to the end of the curve. So this is the beginning of the curve and that's the end of the curve. I'm gonna go all the way to the end, click and drag my handle out so that it makes the shape of the feather the way that I want it. Once I get that um, guideline right where I want it and my handle is pulled out to the part where it makes the curve follow the sketch that we have, then I can let go with my mouse. And then this is where it gets a little tricky, all right? I don't wanna stop drawing, but I, I need to make this a corner path. So the easiest way to do that is to click once right here, and then you can click again at the next point and drag it out again. And this time you move your handle, get it close to where you want it. Do the same thing. We're gonna click back on that anchor point and then go to your next point, drag your handle out, click back on that anchor point you just made, let go, go to your next corner, next point, click and drag, let go. When you get close to where you want it, click back on the anchor point you just made Go to the other, the next end of the curve, click and drag. And once you've got your last feather, you let go. And then we can connect this point back to the original anchor. 
Now, this is not perfect. There are some things that I need to fix up, and that is the beauty of Illustrator. So Illustrator, there are no mistakes. You can always fix it afterwards. So we're going to go to this direct selection tool, which is the white arrow. And we can click on each one of these anchor points, these individual anchor points of our shape and fix them up however we need to. So the first one I want to fix up is this one because it's kind of crazy there. So I clicked on that anchor point and maybe it's this one that I actually want to fix because this handle needs to just pull down a little bit so that it's not so crazy far out there. All right. Um, these all look pretty good to me. I'm going to leave those. This one right here. I want this to be like a flat curve and not a point. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here just to show you. Um, I just did command plus to zoom in. You could do control plus if you're on a PC. But that point is right now it's a point and it's not a curve. So I'm selecting that anchor point and up here up at the top, I'm going to convert it to a smooth um, anchor point instead of this corner. And now you can see that that's nice and smooth there. So that's one thing I want to do. I might fix up this anchor point just a little bit, try to get it a little bit closer. Oh, I lost it. Click on the anchor again, try to get it a little bit closer or a little bit further out there. It's okay if they're not perfect, not a big deal. We're just trying to get it close. There we go. All right, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna zoom back out. So this is command minus or control minus if you are on a Windows computer. All right, I've got my, my closed off path here. That's another thing that's super important is to make sure that that first point that we made and the last point connect so that it is all one full shape. It can't just be like a half path. It has to be a full closed in shape. So we got this one shape. I'm gonna use my black arrow tool to select that shape we just created. Hold down the shift key to select the previous shape and we're going to use that shape builder tool again to simply draw a line over one or more shapes to combine them or add them together. So drawing a line from here all the way down to here. And now it's all together in one beautiful owl body shape. All right. Just for my sanity to kind of keep things straight over here, I'm going to rename this path the body and press enter just to make it a little easier for me to keep up with what's going on over here in my layers panel. All right, so we have our body done. I'm going to work on this little tummy piece right here. So really easy compared to this body because we're only using two ellipses. We're going to use a long ellipse to make that piece and a shorter, wider ellipse to make this piece. And then we're going to use a shape builder tool to just keep the, that piece. All right, so let's do it with the ellipse tool. I'm going to start up pretty high here and get that shape, kind of move it like this. Get it lined up the best I can. Once again, don't stress if it's not perfect. Get it close. Go ahead and get another ellipse tool. Go across that way. Maybe scooch that in a little bit. That looks pretty good. Maybe pull it down just a tad. There we go. All right, with my black arrow tool, I'm going to select both the first ellipse and the second ellipse. Use my shape builder tool. Now this time, I don't want to combine any of these shapes. I just want this to be a shape by itself. So I'm not going to draw a line over two different shapes. I'm just going to draw a line inside of here. And I just did like a little curly one. Once again, you could just draw a simple line. Now I'm going to use that black arrow tool to select all the pieces I don't want and get rid of them. I don't want this piece, so I selected it and press delete on your keyboard. I don't want this piece, delete on my keyboard. And just to check to make sure there's no little outside pieces, I just moved it away and put it back. No extra pieces, so we're good there. So we have our body is that one. You can see it's selected. And this piece, I'm going to call it the tummy. So we'll do tummy and press enter. OK, time for some wings. So these are really easy as well. We have just a nice ellipse going on here. We do need to do some rotation though. So I've got my selection tool and I'm going to go on the corner of the bounding box and where the circular arrow, this little rounded arrow appears, you hover your mouse a little bit outside of that bounding box. Then you can rotate a little bit. You can stretch it out, pull it down, get that wing close to the curve that you want from the sketch. And once you get it close to where you want it, 
we're going to use the same process again using the shape builder tool so i have the wing selected and i'm holding down the shift key to select that body then i'm going to use the shape builder tool just to pick out this piece because that's the piece that i want to be cut out use my black arrow tool to select everything i don't want which is this inside ellipse piece and press delete on my keyboard now you will notice that because i used this body as um, a part of my shape builder it has renamed it over here again back to path i think it thinks like illustrator thinks that you're changing that path somehow so just for my sanity once again i'm going to rename that again that's the um the body and i'm going to press enter and then now i can click on my wing over here and i'm going to name this one see it's selected right there this is going to be um wing one press enter all right, so clearly if we have wing one, we wanna get wing two. We could do the same process all over again, but I wanna show you another trick. So if I have this shape selected, I can go up to the object menu up at the top, go to transform and reflect, and that's gonna be able to reflect it. We could reflect it up and down or vertically, and we wanna do vertically because it's gonna fit over here. And instead of just reflecting that one shape, I actually want to make a copy of it so that the original stays where it is and the copy is reflected. So I'm going to click on the copy button and you can see that we have the original wing there and then this is the copy that's reflected right here. Holding down my shift key while I move it with the black arrow tool, I can move it all the way over here without it going up and down. That's what the shift key does. So when I'm moving it, holding down the shift key, it won't let me move the wing up and down, which is nice. And then I can kind of snap it over here to the other side of the body. And now we have a wing on this side and a wing on this side. What do you think we're going to call this side of the, or this wing, wing two? So you can see it's selected right there. And we're going to type, title it wing two. Press enter. All right, we're almost halfway there, guys. Okay, so let's, um, let's dive into these eyes because they can get kind of complicated. We're going to use the ellipse tool again. Um, I'm going to draw a ellipse that has to be a perfect circle this time. So once you start your ellipse, you're going to hold down the shift key on your keyboard and that's going to force it to have this perfect perspective, a perfect um, circle instead of ellipse. All right, so I got my first um, circle. I'm going to use my black arrow selection tool to move it, get it lined up with my sketch there. Okay, so this is where um, I'm going to do a couple things where I'm using a few different keys on the keyboard, so pay close attention. I'm going to use that ellipse tool again, and this time I'm going to draw that inside circle, which I want to be a circle, not an ellipse, so I have to hold down the shift key. But I also want the center of that circle to be the same center of the outside circle so that they, have, they share the same center, which is called concentric if you are into geometry terms. So when I hover my mouse and I have that center highlighted, I'm going to start drawing my circle from the center. Now, when I start drawing it, it thinks that I need to go out this way. But if you hold down the Option key or the Alt key if you're on a, um, on a PC, while you're drawing it, it will force it to draw from the center, like um, so that the centers of the two circles match up. So I'm holding down the Option key or the Alt key, and then I also have to hold down the Shift key to keep that proportion so it is a perfect circle. So we get that circle in there, and we're going to do that same exact process again right on top of it. Now, I need to be off of this circle, so I'm just going to click on the black arrow click somewhere else and go back to the ellipse tool and do the same process again so i'm in the center i'm going to start drawing my ellipse hold down the option key so that it knows that the where i clicked to start with is where the center of the circle is and hold down the shift key so that it stays um proportional so it's a perfect circle let go and now i have my three circles my three rings of the eyes I need to do a little cutout here. So what I'm going to do, just um, I'm going to draw like a little circle over here. I'm holding down the shift key to make it um, a perfect circle. And then I'm going to use the black arrow tool, which is our selection tool, and drag it over here so that we have some overlap with um, our innermost circle of the eyes. With that new circle selected and that inner circle, so I have both of those two selected, 
I'm going to go to this Pathfinder over here in the Properties panel, and I'm going to use the second one, which is um, minus front. That means that it's going to take away the front path. The front path is the last one that we just made, which is the small circle. So now it, um, it has cut it out. And because we have such a big stroke on here, it kind of looks like it's still connected. I just want to show you real quick that it's not connected. If I take the size of the stroke down, you can see that it's not connected. Um, I'm going to do undo. So if it looks like it's connected, don't stress too much. When we start to add colors and everything, it's going to make it look a lot more realistic. And when we take away the stroke and everything, so just hang tight. Okay, this side, this eye over here is exactly the same as this eye. So we're going to take and select all of these pieces. Remember that you're holding down shift to select all three of them. And then now this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite um, shortcuts in Illustrator is if you hold down the Alt key or the Option key if you're on a Mac, you will notice that while something is selected and you're holding down the Option or Alt key, the, your arrow turns into like this double arrow. If you keep holding down that key while you click and drag, it will make an exact duplication of whatever you have. So it's a really easy way to copy things. Now you can always go the old school route and do that copy uh, command C or control C and control V and control and command V to paste it. But this is just a, a shortcut. So I'm going to let go. And so now I have an eye here and an eye here. Now, notice that I, I didn't go too far over with this eye because I wanted these two to overlap. I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool to connect these two, the outside pieces of the eyes, eyes. So I selected this outside eye and this outside eye. And we're going to use, where is it, the Shape Builder tool to draw a line connecting those two pieces right there. Now, just so that you can see this a little clearer because I know that things are getting um a little hard to see with the background um, template layer. I'm going to turn off the template layer just for a second. So you can see we're getting pretty far here. Looks good. All right, we got a nose to do next. So um, let me go ahead and group these eyes together because I don't want them to accidentally get moved. So if you take um, your cursor and draw a box around things, it, it will select all of them. So we got all these selected. To group them all together, you can do Command G or Control G on your keyboard. You could also go up here to Object and click on Group. Either way works just fine. Now they are all grouped together. So you can see here in our layers, it says Group. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me stretch it out. Group. And then inside that group is all the paths and the, the shapes that we use to make the eyes. So now I can double click on this group and I can name it Eyes. Once again, it's always a good practice to keep things organized over there. When you get into some more serious projects, you're going to have a ton of different layers, and it's really hard to keep up with them if you don't keep them organized. All right, so that was grouping the eyes. So moving on to our nose. I always call it a nose, but it's clearly a beak because it is a bird. So let's try to <laughs> name it a beak. Um, we're going to use the polygon tool for this one. So it's under the same one as the ellipse tool, rectangle tool, all those. You just have to click and hold your mouse over that tool, and you get the option for the polygon tool. Polygon tool is a little bit different. So instead of clicking and dragging, we're just going to click in the center of where the polygon is going to go. And then this polygon pop-up window pops up. It'll ask you how many sides of a polygon you want to make. So if we want to make a stop sign, we would use type in eight sides. But we are making a beak, not a nose. And so it's going to be a triangle, only three sides. Don't worry about the radius right now so much because um, we're going to scale that however we want later on. Just make sure it has three sides. Click OK. And our triangle has appeared. Now we're going to use that black arrow tool to rotate our triangle. Remember, you can hover your mouse over the corner of the um, transform box until it turns into a rounded arrow, and then you can rotate it. And then you can also scale it to get where you want it. So get go ahead and um, get your triangle exactly how you want it. I'm trying to figure out the best way to make my triangle a little bit bigger. Get it up there. Okay, now in our sketch, it's a rounded beak. So I want to round this um, triangle. Really cool, easy way to do this in Illustrator. So when you have the, the polygon selected, this little circle appears in one of the corners. And it, it doesn't really matter which one it is, but that little circle appears in one of the corners. If you click and drag that circle, it's going to round all of your corners. So I'm just going to round them all a little bit. 
I might need to do a little touch up work on making it bigger or rotating it again after you round the corners and that's fine. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna, oh, I keep losing it. There we go. Rotate it. Maybe move it up a little bit and make it a little bit bigger again and rotate. There we go. All right, so I've got my beak. I've got it now. I finally started calling it a beak. All right, zoomed out there with command minus or control minus. And then now it's time to do my ears. Now, you may ask yourself, why am I not using the Shape Builder tool to cut this out? And the reason why is because this nose, no, I did it. This beak is going to be filled in with a solid color. So you're not gonna be able to see the eyes below it. So it doesn't really matter that we have these shapes underneath it because this is layered on top of the eyes. And so we won't even see it. All right, same process up here with our polygon tool. I'm gonna to click in the center. I want it to be three-sided. I'm gonna rotate it, move it around, scale it up a little bit. Use that corner, um, the little circle in there to make the corners rounded. Get it exactly where I want it. And then once you've got it close to where you want it, might move that in just a little. All right, then you're going to use the Shape Builder tool to cut out this area. So I have this triangle selected, hold down the Shift key, get the body, use my Shape Builder tool, I just want this part. Now I can use my black arrow tool to select the part we don't want and press Delete on our keyboard. Cute little ear for our owl now. Um, so once again, trying to keep up with our layers and making sure we label them properly. So this um, was the beak. And this top one is our ear one. And just like our wings, we're going to make a duplicate of that that's reflected. So we're going to go up to Object, Transform, Reflect while it's selected. Make sure you click on Copy, not OK. So then you have a copy that's reflected. And I'm holding down the Shift key to make sure it stays even. And I can pull it back over here. All right, so we've got both of our ears. We're almost there. We've got just a few things left. All right, our little feet for the owl are just going to be rounded um, rounded rectangles. So clicking on that same tool over here in my toolbar, click and hold it till you go down the second one. A rounded rectangle, click and drag to make your rectangle. And then I'm going to use the black arrow tool to round my corners a little bit more. So I'm zooming in here and I'm gonna round those corners so that it is a little, oh, there we go, a little bit more rounded. And then using that cool shortcut that I showed you earlier, the option key or the uh, alt key while you have um, something selected and the two arrows appear on your cursor, you can click and drag and that will make a copy of it. All right, zooming out a little bit. Now the last thing we need to do is make a rectangle for this perch that um, our owl is sitting on. So I'm just gonna go to the rectangle tool and click and drag a long perch. Now, I intentionally did this in the wrong order because I wanted to show you how to relabel or reorder our um, layers over here. So that last rectangle, that's our perch. And then this is our um, foot one and we got our foot two. But I want foot one and foot two to be on top of the perch so that you can't see the perch um, like the feet are in front of it. So I'm gonna click on both of these two layers. I just clicked on one and hold down the shift key to select the other one. And then I can click and drag it above the perch. So now that they are on top. All right, now is the fun part. We get to color it in. So if you enjoyed coloring as a kid and doing coloring books, this is, this is all the good stuff. So um, I'm gonna take that template layer and go ahead and turn it off so we can see a little bit better. And we're going to start filling in the different shapes with the different colors. So but first I'm going to click on my body and I'm going to go over here to my fill and I'm going to choose not the darkest brown, but like the second darkest brown. Maybe one down. Mm, yeah, like that one. No, I won't do a little bit darker. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to do the same color for my wing. Really cool tool here. You can either go over here after you've selected the wing and choose the same color for your fill or you can get our eyedropper tool and just select it, something that you want to copy the um, color from. So I'm gonna select my wing here, the eyedropper tool, and then I wanna copy the color from the other wing and see so what copied it over there. 
All right, the beak, we're going to make this nice bright orange color. The body or the tummy, I'm going to select that one. I'm going to make it like a light brown, like the lightest brown over here. I'm going to make the ears the same color. You can select more than one at a time. So if I select both of the ears by holding down the shift key, I can fill them both in with that light brown. I'm going to make the feet the same color. So holding down the shift key and getting both of those, get them the same color. I'm going to do my perch the darkest brown like that. And then my eyes get a little bit more complicated. So remember that we made this a group. So if I have the group selected and I change the fill color to, let's just go with white to start with, it changes everything to white. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to take it, change it back to no fill. So inside the group, you can edit individual pieces, but right now we're not inside the group. So to be inside the group, you have to double click. And you'll notice that you are inside the group because it says eyes up here, owl eyes. We're inside the group and we can only edit those pieces that are inside. Now I can just select the outside version of the eyes and we're going to make that part black. It looks like I'm still selecting everything. Let me go down here in my... Oh, so this is the problem here is I have that... that um, the outside part of the eyes are above the inside part of the eyes over here. So I'm taking that layer and moving it down to the bottom. There we go. So now I'm going to select this middle spot and press shift and get the middle um, ellipse on that side. And we're going to change the fill color to white. And then finally, the in most inside one, hold down shift and get that one as well. We're going to make that one black. To get out of this um, group, like isolation mode is what it's called. It says isolation mode over there. You can either double click outside of the object or you can click on the back arrow right here. So we're back out, out, out of the isolation mode and we can edit anything. Now, obviously that blue is kind of a crazy stroke going on there. So I'm going to select one of these things right here. And just to show you another tool here, so I have this ear that is selected that has the fill color of the light brown and the blue stroke. I'm going to go up to the top where it says select and go to same stroke color. So it's going to select every object in my document that has the same stroke color, which just happens to be everything. And then we can change it so that nothing has a stroke. So we're going to turn off the stroke for everything. So our owl looks something like this. My wing is a little separated there, so I'm clicking on it and with my arrow on my keyboard and just nudging it over a little bit so it's no longer separated from my, my owl's body. Now we have this cute owl and um, you have officially learned how to use shapes to build animals in Illustrator. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. So first thing to save it, we're going to go to File, Save As, and we're going to save it to your computer. We're going to name it Last Name. First initial, last name, first initial, obviously you'd actually type yours in, underscore, animal shapes. And then go ahead and click save and OK. Then we're going to do file export, export as. PNG is what we want, use artboards. It already has the right name up there and then click export. You can decide to make it transparent background so that if you have um, something you want to put this on and you didn't want to see the white, you could do that. Or you could change it to a white background or a black background. You know, you can get crazy with that. Um, I'm going to keep it at transparent. If you're going to use this on a screen, so something like on a web page, 72 PPI is fine. However, if you're going to print it, you probably want to move it up to 300 PPI. I'm just going to do 300 PPI for today and then click OK. And now we have both of our files saved. If you like this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and drop a line in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for alerts of when new videos are posted. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy creating.